However, we also know that in order to have great teachers in our classrooms, we need great leaders leading our schools. And so principals in the schools never underestimate the power that you have to impact our children's education. Beyond that, district leaders, community leaders, political leaders, I want you all to know that you're part of this continuum and how we make sure that our schools are preparing our kids for the new world that they're gonna live in. In our blueprint, we focus a lot of our attention on great teachers and great leaders because we know that the preparation of these uh, in, in individuals will help us to get to our goal. The North Carolina New Schools Project has seen tremendous success, as Dr. Habit mentioned earlier, reducing dropout rates, increasing high school graduation rate, putting more rigor into the curriculum, preparing kids for college, not only to enter college, but to be successful once they get there. This effort speaks directly to the very real need of our African-American male students across this country. They need that same kind of rigor, they need the same kind of support, and they need people like you who can help them see a vision beyond one that they see for themselves now. So we've, we've, we've put out a lot of money across this country, but in exchange for these funds that we put out, our schools have agreed to take on a courageous but difficult road of turning around some of the schools who haven't performed as well as they should have. Many of you may even recognize some of these schools as SIG schools. None of these schools are in the room today, are, at least that's my understanding. But what is happening in our SIG schools across the, the country is what's happening in your schools. You're taking students that some people said couldn't do it, and you're demonstrating that they can. You're taking some students that would not have elected to do something like this on their own in regards to the rigor, and you're encouraging them, motivating them, and helping them see the benefit of it. So these models are designed to see the kinds of results that we see uh, when we look at the results of the new school project schools. This administration has also tackled a comprehensive reform through the number of innovative programs. You've heard of Promised Neighborhood, where we not only look at what happens within the schools, but we're really, really concerned about what's happening in our communities. We do recognize that the work that you're doing cannot be done all by yourselves, and that there's power in the parent being involved in this work. You all know this. There's power in the community being involved in this work. You all know this also. So we're trying to build partnerships and among community organizations and local leaders like leaders we have here in this room today. We believe you're critical in helping us to make sure that our dropout rate uh, goes down and our graduation rate go up. In fact, around this country, I tell people, you need, we need to encourage the innovation that we see here in North Carolina. This morning when I was speaking to the board, uh, the board of directors, I mentioned that the Secretary of Education has been to this state probably more than most states around the country. Reason why, because the Secretary recognized that there are some great things happening in North Carolina and we wanna to try to model some of, those, uh, some, of the, some of these things around the country. You are redesigning schools and instruction, individualizing education to meet the needs of our unique students and you're seeing your great results. With more students graduating, more students taking rigorous coursework, and more students going on to the post-secondary piece. We're not seeing enough of this around the country. I, I wish I could stand here today and tell you we are, but we're not. I go to places where student achievement performance is dismal. And when I say dismal, I mean very dismal. Places where a proficiency rate of students is not even at the double digit. So there's a lot of work that we need to do throughout our country. And so I, continue, I challenge you to continue the work that you're doing and um, know that the Department of Education is there to support you. As I close, there are a couple of things I wanna lead you with, and this is a leadership piece that I'm, I'm gonna talk about a little bit. Because in our office in the department, we talk a lot about the leadership piece, a piece that I'm really, uh, really passionate about. Uh, many of you may not know, but while I served as superintendent, I also served as an adjunct professor over at North Carolina State University for about 10 years, and I was pretty passionate about 
supporting the university and building the next generation of leaders because I think leadership is critical. So there are four qualities that I think our leaders uh, must have. When I talk about leaders, I'm talking about teacher leaders, I'm talking about principal leaders, I'm talking about political leaders, and I'm also talking about community leaders. First, they take the courage to do the right thing for children. We must disrupt the status quo and press for equity, access, and higher standards, especially for our low income and our disadvantaged students, for our parents who truly do not understand the education system that their students uh, must be educated in. Second, we must constantly seek new ways to collaborate with a wide range of partners from our state administrators to our district and school leaders to our nonprofits and to other education organizations. But even courage and collaboration are not enough. We must build the capacity of our systems to deliver and to accelerate student learning. We must admit when policies do not work and we must invest in what we know to be proven practices. We must recruit, retain, and reward our most talented staff, and we must continue to learn from one another as you are all doing here at this conference. Finally, we need a relentless commitment to reform. We cannot let up until we've reached our goal, and our goal is for every single child to be successful regardless of their odds they bring to us or regardless of the obstacles a child may face. So if you take the steps that I've talked about and then you reflect on where you are in education reform, I think you'll see that we're all at a very unique place and time in public education. We have the content knowledge and the expertise to dramatically improve teaching and learning in classrooms and to improve education for every single child. I'm convinced we have the content knowledge, we have the expertise. The real question is, do we have the commitment? And do we have the courage to do what it takes to transform and prepare every single student for college and career? You see, I hear the feedback as I travel across the country. And there are those who believe that every child can't be a college prepared student. There are those who believe that not every child can be prepared for a career. And so we go on and on and we blame others. I challenge you to think about your own belief system. And I ask you to consider as leaders in your schools, in your districts, in your community. And I ask you to think about what are those beliefs? What is it that you believe in? And then I ask you to go back and I ask you to look at the policies that you implement on a day-to-day -day basis, and I ask you to ask yourself whether or not your policies reflect your beliefs. If they do, you're probably accomplishing some phenomenal things. But if you truly, truly believe in some things and your policy work in opposition to it, you really need to think about whether or not those policies should be changed. So as I look out among you today, I think the answer to the questions I asked earlier for me, the answer is yes. There's absolutely no doubt that I believe being here today demonstrate your commitment to not only be a better educator, but also to make sure that you make the significant difference in the child life that you've set out to do. But I think we all realize that none of us can do this all by ourselves. Success in this effort comes from building communities of learners, learning from developing professional learning communities and by working together at the federal level, the state level, the local level, and the community level. So I'll close my remarks with a quote from the president. He said, unless we take action, unless we step up, there are countless children who will never realize their full talent and potential. I don't accept that future for them, and I don't accept that future for the United States of America. I too believe in the president's quote, I do not accept that future, and I believe each one of you have the same thoughts. You are leaders in this effort to ensure equity and excellence for the next generation of children. I thank you for stepping up on behalf of our state's children, our nation's children, because the children you educate in North Carolina may live in any part of our country or any part of the world. 
So you're preparing every single child to be able to be a full participant in the world we live in. It's an honor to join you. Again, um, I commend you, Dr. Habit, for the leadership that you're providing for the North Carolina New Schools Project. And I want to thank you for inviting me back to North Carolina.